good afternoon and i believe you have been fine i believe you are enjoying at all you are welcome to today's class i still remain this is Oladish. the topic for our week four is concept of force concept of force now let's do a revision of what we learned from the previous class and the topic of the previous class is consequences or implications of teenage pregnancy. We discussed what teenage pregnancy is, which is the pregnancy in a girl between the ages of 10 to 19 years. We also discussed that it is normally unwanted, unplanned, and unexpected. Also, we discussed about the consequences and implications of teenage pregnancy the effects of self-medication and drug on pregnancy or during pregnancy, and also the way to prevent teenage pregnancy, which is abstinence, abstinence, abstaining from sexual intercourse, restraining from having sexual intercourse. Good. Now let's go to the details of today's lesson. So I've said earlier on, our topic is concept or first. Now let's look at the learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to, number one, divine force. Number two, state the types of force. Number three, explain contact force, non-contact force, magnetic force, and gravitational force. And finally, give examples of each type of force. Give examples of each type of force. Now, let's see the definition of force. A force is a push or pull, which changes a body's state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line. Come again. A force is a push or pull which changes a body's state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line. A push, when you move a body forward, away from you, away from you, that is a push. Pull, when you drag an object or a body towards you, that is a pull. So, when you push a body away or you drag a body towards you, that means you change the state of rest of such a body in a straight line. Now, let's see the types of force. We have contact force and non-contact force. Contact force and non-contact force. Let's take a look at them one by one. Contact force. Contact force is a force that is applied by objects in contact with each other. Meaning that contact force involves two objects in contact with each other. They must be in contact with each, with each other. Now, examples of contact force are push, push. You move the body away from you. It's a force, that is push. Pull, you move a body towards you or you drag a body or an object towards you. Bend, when you bend something, when you bend an object, stretch. Just like rubber band, when you stretch the rubber band, this is an example of stretch. Squeeze, probably it's a, a, a paper, you squeeze, you squeeze, then grab, you hold the body, grab it towards you. I believe you understand. Those are the examples of contact force. Now, let me share this picture with you. A boy pulling a cat. A cat with boots. That this boy is pulling the cat towards him. Now, let's see another picture. A girl pushing, pushing a cat, a couple of fruits. The girl is pushing the cat away. So you can see that the girl is an object or a body. And the cat is, a, is an object. So you have to hold the object. It involves two objects in contact. The girl is holding it, so he's in contact with the cat to actually demonstrate a contact force. Now, let's look at non-contact force. Non-contact force. 
A non-contact force is a force which acts on an object without coming in contact with it. That is from a distance. You know, we said a contact force is involves two objects, and this object or body will have to come in contact with each other. But in non-contact force, at this case, the B, it involves an object or objects without coming in contact with each other. These two objects, they don't come in contact with each other. That is, they are from a distance, from a distance. Now, examples of non-contact forces are, examples of non-contact forces are gravitational force, two, magnetic force, and we have electrical force. Gravitational force, magnetic force, and electrical force. Now, let's take a look at each of these examples. Gravitational force. Gravitational force causes an object thrown from a high distance to fall on the ground. Gravitational force, that is gravity. An object from a high distance fall on the ground. If a little boy is on a table, climb a table and jump down from the table, it is the force of gravity that enables that little boy to jump down on the ground. Also, a running water from the tap demonstrates gravitational force. When you open the tap, the water from the tap, when it runs into the bowl or on the floor, the force of gravity that makes that to be possible. Let me share the picture with you. You can see the running water. Running water. So this, this running water be able to fall on the ground because of the force of gravity. Good. Now, let's see magnetic force. Magnetic force, which is an example of non-contact force. Magnetic force causes iron filling to cling to the ends of the bar magnets. Magnetic force causes iron filling to cling to the ends of the bar magnets. To attract, the iron fillings will attract the we cling to the to the bar magnets, right? That is the magnet will attract the iron fillings or any iron. Now let me give you the picture. Let's see a magnet attracting iron. This is the iron, and this is the magnet. So when the magnet is in contact with the iron, just place the magnet around the iron. You will see the iron will move towards the direction of the magnet and the magnet will attract it. So in this case, it's not actually that, that the two bodies, they are not in contact with each other, but the body will attract the other body. Now this is also an example of iron filling. Magnet attracting iron fillings. This is a magnet. And you can see the iron fillings mixed. They are in the soil, in the soil or the sand. They are in the sand. These are the sand here. Yeah. These are the sand here. Yeah. So the sand has iron filling. The sand and the iron filling they are mixed together. So I can use the magnet to attract the iron fillings. So this magnet attracts the iron fillings. You can see before they come in contact, just from the distance, you place the iron just from I mean the, the, the magnet just from the distance and was and the magnet will begin to attract the iron fillings. Now let's move to the last example of non-contact force, electrical force, electrical force. Let's see how this operates. If you rub your ball pen or your hair, or your hair, or your hair, sorry. If you rub your ball pen on your hair, or you, or your comb on your hair, with, or you comb your hair with plastic comb. Let me come again. If you rub your ball pen on your hair, or you comb your hair with plastic comb, you bring them near a piece of paper or pieces of paper. It attracts the paper. This is an electrical attraction caused by electrostatic force. Now let me share the picture with you so that we understand. You can see this is a comb, and this comb. You have, you have used the comb, you must use the comb to comb your hair. To comb your hair. So after you want to comb your hair, you bring that comb towards a towards pieces of paper. The comb will attract the paper. So this is this 
demonstrate electrostatic force or electrical force. So a plastic form attracting pieces of paper. I believe you understand concept of force. Discuss what the force is, which is a pull or a push on an object that is in its, in its state of rest. The type of force, the sort type of force, the contact force and non-contact force. Examples of non of contact force. We have push, pull, bench, stretch, wrap, and so on. Then example of non-contact force. We have gravitational force, electrical force, and magnetic force with various pictures to demonstrate them. With this, we come to the end of the fourth week. Now let's move to the fifth week. It's still on force, still on force, the fifth week. And it's calculation of gravitational force. That is the topic for the fifth week. It's still the continuation of the fourth week, Gra calculations of gravitational force. Now let's see the learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to, one, solve calculations on gravitational force, explain balance and unbalanced force, divide friction, state the advantages and disadvantages of friction, then list the ways to reduce friction. These are what is expected of you to know and to explain at the end of the lesson. Now, let's see gravitational force formula. The formula for, for, for calculating gravitational force is F is equal to M multiplied by A. F is equal to M multiplied by A. We are F is force, and this force is measured in Newton. Our uh, M, which is mass, is measured in kilogram. And A is acceleration due to gravity, and is measured in meter per second squared. Meter per second squared. Now let's see some sub examples. Example one, here. Yeah. If a mass of 200 grams is acted upon by a force F, which produces an acceleration of 5 meter per second square, calculate the force. Now from the formula to calculate force, original force, that F is equal to MA. F is equal to MA. The mass M, our mass M is in gram. And if you did not forget, Mass is always in kilograms, so meaning that you have to convert the gram to kilogram. So that means 200 divided by 1000 give us 0 0.2 kilogram. Our acceleration A is 5 meter per second squared. So F is equal to M, that is mass and A, and our mass is 0 0.2 multiplied by 5. So force is equal to 1.0 Newton. Not, don't forget. Mass, I mean, force rather is measured in Newton. Help you understand this example. Let's see another example. Example two A body of mass 50 kilogram is accelerated upon by a force F, which produces an acceleration of 2 meters per second. Calculate the force. Here, our mass is already in kilogram, so no need of converting to kilogram again. So, mass F is equal to our F rather. Force is equal to M A. Mass is 50 kilogram. Acceleration is 2 meter per second squared. So our force is equal to 50 times 2, which will give us 100 Newton. It's very simple, right? Very, very simple once you know the formula. Good. Now, under this calculation, we also have work done against gravity. That is example 3. It says if a man lifts a load of 3 kilograms from the ground to a height of 3.5 meters. Calculate the work done by the man in lifting the object. Here we are calculating the work done. And the work done also implies the force we apply during the work. Gravity, acceleration due to, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. It's always constant and you'll be given in any problem or work. Now, solution. Work done is equal to MGH, that is the formula for work done. Mass times acceleration to gravity times height. Mass is M, the G is force of gravity, and H is height. So now, work done is equal to M times G times H. 
A is equal to 3 kilograms, G is equal to 9.6 meters per second square, then H is 3.5 meters. So you multiply the 3, what does it do? We now be 3 and 9.8 times 3.5 to give us 102.9 joule. 102.9 joule. Well done is measured in joule. Should not forget that. Good. Now, let's see another work example. Example four. A woman carried a basket of mangoes of 10 kilograms from the ground on a table at 2.5 meters. Calculate the work done by the man in lifting the mangoes. I told you G is always constant, 9.8 meters per second. So from my formula, what going is called to MGH. Our M is 10 kilograms, G is 9.8 meters per second, and our H is 2.5 meters. 2.5 meters. So what going is equal to 10 times 9.8 times 2.5, and this will give us 245 joules. 245. It's a very, very simple calculation. I believe you understand. Now, let's move to another subtopic under this is friction. Friction. Friction is defined as a force that resists or opposes the sliding or rolling of two objects in contact with each other. Friction is defined as the force that resists or opposes. Force that resists. I try to stop or oppose the sliding or rolling of two objects in contact with each other. Now, let's see advantages of friction. Friction enables us to walk freely. The frictional force between our leg and the ground enables us to walk freely. Also, due to friction between the wood and the nail, nails hold wood together. I have my wood and my nail, then I want to ensure that the, the nail goes inside the wood. So due to friction, it is, it is possible for a nail to hold the wood together. Also, friction sharpens tools. It makes the sharpening of tools possible. Probably I want to sharpen my knife or cutlass. The frictional force between the two objects, probably I'm using stone to sharpen my knife or cutlass. It makes that frictional force makes the sharpening of these two possible. Also, it helps to support the ladder against the wall. We place the ladder on the wall. The frictional force helps the ladder to stand against the wall without falling off. Also, friction enables the moving vehicle comes to an halt when brakes are applied. When a vehicle is moving and a man or the driver applied brake. The frictional force enables the vehicle to stop, to stop when the brake is applied. And finally, here, yeah, frictional force prevents the tire of vehicle from slipping off the road. Yes, when the vehicle is moving, the frictional force between the tire and the road enables the, the, the tire from slipping off the road while the vehicle is moving. Now, let's see the disadvantages of friction. Friction reduces motion. It makes an object stop. Due to friction, noise occurs in machines. Yes, when you are using machine, probably grinding machine, you can see when grinding machine is in operation, you see voice, I mean noise rather, noise will occur. Also, it causes wear and tear in machines. That is, if you grab the belts of machine, you can tear and can wear off because of friction. It produces heat in various parts of the machine. Actually, the engine, the engine for part of friction, the engine tends to eat. The engine tends to be hot. So friction produces heat. By friction, the engine can consume more fuel. Yes, because of friction, engine can consume of machine consume more fuel. And this can cause loss of money. This can cause loss of money. Now let's see the ways to reduce friction. How can we reduce friction? Reducing friction. Some of the ways to reduce friction are one by applying lubricants. That is oil and grease. You can apply lubricants to rub the surface of machine parts. Also, friction can be reduced by making the surface smooth by polishing and making the surface of, of the objects 
that are in contact with each other's nodes. And also it can be reduced by using wheels to move objects. You can use wheels to move F objects. This way you can, one can reduce friction. I believe we'll be able to understand this topic. We've discussed friction, we've discussed the calculations on gravitational force. How to get a gravitational force, the formula for calculating force, F is equal to MP, mass times acceleration, and how we can calculate work done. The formula for calculating work done, mass times force of gravity, G, multiplied by H. We also discuss friction, the advantages and disadvantages of friction, and how we can reduce friction. Please, you can read more on this topic from the uploaded notes on the school websites, the recommended textbook, which is the big science textbook, book one, for junior secondary school, book one, by Gio, I see your name, and also Spectrum, big science for junior secondary school, by CEO, Uwe Thank you very much. I believe we've been able to enjoy the class and enjoy the topic. Please do your assignments, copy your notes, and prepare for the test that is coming very, very soon, the PPT test. Stay blessed and keep staying safe. See you in the next class. Bye.